Uh, Ari, let me bring you into this. Um, I've been saying a lot on the air that Donald Trump defies all conventional political gravity. Uh, usually you would think that if somebody gets arrested, if somebody gets indicted, that their poll numbers would go down. In every case, his have gone up. And I, I wonder if it's been such overkill, because this started the day that he and Melania Trump came down that escalator, leading into, you know, three long years of what turned out to be nothing but lies and conspiracy theories, peddled by fake news, CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times, uh, three broadcast network, The Washington Post, they all seem to be wrong. They all were wrong, rather. And I wonder if, in some odd way, they took a man like Donald Trump and they actually have turned him into a victim. And people see through this. And no, none of what they now do matters to people because of all the fundamental unfairness that led up to this point. You know, Sean, the, the, we have gaps in this country. People say a gender gap. There's this gap. There's that gap. The biggest gap we have is actually between the mainstream media and the American people. Specifically, college-educated Democrats who are really reporters, the mainstream media, ABC, NBC, CBS, The New York Times, The Washington Post, and their failure to understand the country they live in outside its elite bubbles, its cities, its college-educated campuses. They do not understand the rural voters of Iowa. They will parachute in, interview them, talk about what these people believe in, and then leave and not understand their way of life, their way of thinking, their way of being raised in a gun culture, their way of fishing. It is such a disparate group of people. But the majority, of course, are those type of Americans who are not the college-educated Democrats reporters. And that's why they missed the story of 2016. And that's why I think that you, you have still so many people cheering for the defeat of Donald Trump who are out of touch with such a huge swath of this country. Donald Trump, to his credit, is intuitively in touch with them. And you're seeing that tonight on the ground in Iowa. These results are really staggering if they hold up for President Trump. Precedent is important. History is important. And Donald Trump is shattering it this year with the margin of his victory. Even if he falls short of 50, his margin between first and second is massive. Now, for that second, because I do think it still is important, and we all need to recognize New Hampshire has a very different electoral makeup than Iowa does. Far more college educated, far more moderate. That would play to Nikki Haley's benefit, you have to presume. And if she wins in second in Iowa, it will boost her going to New Hampshire. Haley's problem, though, based on the results tonight, is she's got to crack conservatives. She cannot win on the basis of liberal, moderate Republicans alone with some help from independents. She's got to do better among true blue conservatives. And that's where, in Iowa at least, there's no evidence that anybody can run against Donald Trump. Well, that's interesting. I, I've always felt that the fact New Hampshire allows independents to decide whether they prefer to vote in a Democratic primary or the Republican yeah. primary. Uh, Ari, great analysis. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.